Hello and welcome to Strat News Global and welcome to the GIST, a signature show on foreign affairs and security. I'm Surya Gangadran and this evening we are looking at uh, Nepal, uh, where the uh, ongoing politics and uh, the COVID surge has complicated issues and put them in the um, uh, limelight for all the wrong reasons. I have with me from Kathmandu, Yubraj Gimre. Uh, to many of us in India, he'd be a known familiar figure from Nepal. He's a well-known journalist and an old colleague of mine also. Yubraj, uh, glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we get on to the questions to Yubraj, I'd like to briefly go through um, a graphic that I have uh, read on uh, the background to what is going on in Nepal. Um, as you're aware, uh, K.P. Sharma Uli, the current Prime Minister, has been fighting a battle for political survival for some time. Uh, he lost a confidence vote in Parliament only the other day, but President Bhandari has prorogued Parliament. Uh, it seems uh, Uli now has a chance to continue as Prime Minister without accountability. So let's get a sense as to what is actually going on there. Yubraj, just what is this? Um, um, Oli has lost a confidence vote, yet he continues, and parliament is prorogued. Is this constitutionally valid? Well, uh, there was definitely a hurry, uh, you know, from uh, the uh, from Prime Minister K P Oli after losing the vote of confidence, and for the president to be endorsing that uh, in addition to prorogue parliament instantly. But presidents also set in motion. Uh, the process of inviting political parties to form a government under Article 76.2, which means anyone commanding majority support in parliament can stake the, uh, with the support of two or more political parties, can stake the claim before the president and see in a wisdom can invite that person to form the government on condition that uh, that person would uh, prove majority in the floor within a month. So that is, and that deadline expires tomorrow. Let's see, you know, like no party, no individual has come forward so far to stake the claim because most games are going on in a conspiratorial manner behind the scene. Because mm -hmm. it seems that they, uh, uh, no individual has got required majority. So for that, they have to get into conspiracy, horse trading, and all that. So none of these things are open. One, but supposing nobody is invited to form the government under Article 76.2, KP Oli stands a better chance because he continues to be the party of the single largest party, uh, leader of the single largest party in the house. So automatically, that uh, you know, like uh, he gets the chance. Uh, to, to form the government, uh, again, on condition that he'll prove majority within uh, 30 days in the floor of the House. In other democracy, perhaps a prime minister who has lost the majority would have stepped aside on moral yeah. ground, but we don't see that happening in Nepal. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, your um, political evolution is still happening. You know, it's something in process. Uh, let me yes. come to my... Yes. Uh, are elections due this month? Will they happen? Uh, you mean election, general election, or election for the prime ministers? Well, whichever election, there was an election scheduled sometime in April or May, isn't it? No, no, that was another. See, what Oli had done in December, to be precise, December 20, he deserved the House of Representatives after there were a lot of, you know, like uh, dissident activities in his yeah. party. So he blamed the dissident leaders of not cooperating with him to run the government. So he uh, dissolved parliament and announced that election would take place in two phases, end of April and early May. But Supreme Court set aside that decision. Um, uh, and now Supreme, uh, this parliament has been reinstated. This problem, what you're saying, this vote of confusion that he sought was in that revived parliament, which it looks almost very certain that if Oli becomes the prime minister, he might dissolve parliament because he won't be able to prove his majority within 30 uh, days. So before that, 
he might be dissolving parliament so election would be there at least you know like uh, when he has to announce election within 6 months uh, of dissolving the house mm -hmm. so that gives him enough time to play his game in fact that's bridging to the other point he showed extraordinary ability to maneuver among all his rivals isn't it i mean an that's amazing yeah, that's that's very true and uh, that's very true we see you know like spent this times in governance in checking corruption in fighting covid and all that they were really been a very different <laughs> country to be in <laughs> and at this time with the covid raging i mean uh, his entire focus seems to be on the uh, and for that matter even the political class to be fair they are all focused on politicking isn't it yeah how to retain power even after having lost the vote of confidence that is that is un, unusual and unexpected un in any democracy now how bad is the covid surge uh, ibrat it is you know like uh, surya this uh, second wave of covid has really taken huge turn and uh, this uh, positive uh, this rate is more than 45% and now hospitals are running out of oxygen out of ventilators out of icu it is people people are dying people who probably could have been saved with little bit of care in hospitals they are dying so yesterday uh, was the highest number it crossed 200 where earlier in the first phase it never you know like crossed 20 25 now it's you know like daily 100 150 now we discussed to uh to uh, 50 and total number of people infected stands around 410000 uh so it is uh, and vaccine you know like so far nepal has been able to procure 2.4 million doses of vaccine from india and china uh, people have uh, some have lucky i mean a very small number of people maybe around 300000 they got both shots but there are many waiting for the second shots and there are many more who have not even got the first shot so we really don't we really don't know what shape size and volume it is going to check and government has very irresponsibly said that the health system in nepal has almost collapsed sending a very very psychologically depressing message across mm -hmm. and the uh, indian vaccines are not coming well indian vaccine uh, uh, i think around uh, 11 lakh uh, doses uh, came and nepal was uh, dealing with the government of india especially you know like pune this company serum india to get another uh, 50 lakh doses out of that it had already made payment for 20 lakh doses but it's not coming because because of the problem there because india is, is in short supply or something yeah. but it is not coming although nepal has paid for 20 lakh uh, doses already mm -hmm. and the chinese are they helping out well chinese yes they did uh, send uh, i think almost the same number of uh, you know like uh, uh, vaccine and maybe they are going to send more uh, only yesterday uh, china sent some 4 uh, 400000 cylinders for oxygen and 10 ventilators and uh, process of sending more equipment is continued they are doing they are doing uh, a lot also and yeah. vaccine yes i think china uh, chinese vaccine will come maybe a week later sputnik also from russia will come mm -hmm. but prop there is proper in you know like uh, there is there is lack of proper distribution of these vaccines yeah. uh, you mm -hmm. know in different parts of the country that's also another problem the similar problem here you know yeah so uh, and we yeah so in that sense um, has this reinforced uh, perceptions about india you know the big bad brother out there well well in a perception about india is more on political issues diplomatic issues and more on attitude of you know like indian bureaucracy or whatever here uh that at times that brazen uh, involvement in nepal's internal politics but another on other issues uh, this humanitarian cooperation at the time of earthquake now even at the time of covid 
although uh, india perhaps overplayed about you know like uh, the support it gave to nepal but uh, there is not much complaint because nepal government and nepalese people are also understanding the situation general indian people are facing especially yeah. you know like uh, the kind of news coming from indian media and all that they are in crisis too so uh, there's not much accusation towards india uh, but uh, i told you it's more on policy matter more on those interference in internal politics and more on certain kind of mm-hmm. attitude uh, is there a sense that india has stepped back and is less uh, involved less uh, interfering sorry sorry can you can you is there a sense that india is less involved now in nepal's internal affairs less interfering in that sense well theoretically yes uh, when from what the you know like responsible uh, uh, you know like uh, individual or personal persons are saying is yes india is watching and not much interested in nepal's internal politics but unfortunately mm. that is not the case because there are conjuncture which is very visible in which even in the current crisis uh, uh, let's say mahant thakur who uh, uh, was india's i mean nepali leader a very senior political leader but someone who claimed that 2015 blockade when india had uh, wanted nepal's constitution promulgation delayed uh you know they, then there was this blockade for five months for which india on uh, bad a uh, kind of you know like india uh, india was bitterly criticized in nepal and for perhaps in the international community because of the hardship immediately after the earthquake in nepal yeah. because of short supply of things mahan thakur and his party and the groups they said we have we are responsible for blockade of the uh, border but uh, that was something their claim was something much beyond their you know like capacity it was clearly government of india support that had, you know like uh, that resulted in the blockade of the border now same man thakur and only was the most hated anti india face in the power he was the <laughs> prime minister and man thakur has said quite often that uh, only is anti tarai anti india and all that but now same man thakur has made it a prestige issue for supporting mm-hmm. oli you know, so india is definitely involved in its own way but it's counterproductive it's not going to work in the long run mm-hmm. and how long do you expect this political muddle to continue well one uh, is because uh, there's three day first three day deadline given for uh, formation of the government under article 762 would be over tomorrow then another three days for if that doesn't work if that doesn't work then another uh, only probably would get another chance and we'll he'll do it immediately i mean he'll get the chance immediately given president soft karna um, uh, at times to towards only and then after that but that is not going to ensure political instability the real game will begin after the formation of this government either under article 762 or under oli under article 763 real problem is going to begin there because that government wouldn't have a larger legitimacy for a government for a person to lead a government after having been defeated in parliamentary uh, vote of confidence and then be unrest there will be trauma and of course it is corona time pandemic time people may not come out in the street but a, la- a substantial degree of legitimacy would be gone on the first day itself mm-hmm. and does he have the chinese on his side well no i mean like uh, only really try to cultivate china after 2015 block in and he succeeded because he signed uh, he paved the ground for signing trade and transit agreement with china and procuring petroleum products and all that but uh, and then again 2018 when he became he continued in, in the same spirit xi jinping president xi jinping came here then they start they established fraternal relation between two communist parties to the extent that chinese communist party were teaching the nepal communists uh, about the principle and philosophy of xi path and how to develop nepal and all that it didn't it didn't work now uh, now in the I mean, uh, last few months uh 
very clearly only and india's establishment seems to have you know like uh, developed some rapport and now he's he seems to be far away from chinese the chinese attempt of uh, chinese of course played a role in bringing the maoist party and uml together but they couldn't save uh, the party when differences uh, you know started uh, crippling the government activities and all that so chinese failed at that point and only didn't listen to the chinese to uh, resign and save the party unity i think i think they are now fall now but china is deeply entrenched in nepal especially after 2006 uh radical political changes in which india and western countries including america played a role in china became very suspicious about their presence in nepal and in response in large its presence its uh, investment and its uh, you know other economic activities so china is a major factor as influential as india in nepal's internal politics but their ways are different the ways are different when chinese bring cylinders and ventilators and other equipments they they don't talk about politics but the basis is clearly political also yeah <laughs> so lessons to learn from there any last <laughs> thing that, uh, the uh, but uh, i mean you better when you look at this entire scenario you know what is your final summing up you know which direction is nepal going what does it want what do its politicians yeah. do yeah well uh, it's a very you know like uh, nepal's uh, it's this death of not only the political i mean the hope of political stability it is the death of democracy in the sense that political parties which came to power and which came together and you know forced the king to hand over power to political parties or people's representatives in 2006 bungled the entire chances and they started I mean, they they treated democracy only as a label, but not in their yeah. conduct. The uh, principle of accountability is gone, and now only is backed up all these constitutional bodies with his supporters. So it's very partisan uh, constitutional bodies, even Supreme Court. You know, like impartiality is doubtful and all that. So for and they all that if they want to to have democracy, you know, like. Uh, strength in nepal all that they can do is review correct the mistakes and involve every power in nepal including the monarchy because it has got a huge uh, traditional base and lot of respect in a section of the people because in in the record, in the peace process and uh, constitution making process monarchy and uh, traditional forces was completely kept out you cannot yeah. reach a consensus you cannot re- say, you know like make the peace process success by excluding a, a section of the conflict a party of the conflict so that is the mistake they committed i hope they they re- re- look into that and correct their position and make more accommodative and act in a democratic manner in the principle with the principle accountability i think nepal stands a great potential to to grow uh, politically uh, with a stable democracy and opening the chances of prosperity economically mm-hmm. so let's look forward to some better times in nepal and india i think we both deserve it yubraj thanks very much it's been a pleasure talking to you after a long time and yes. let's keep this going thank you very much my pleasure surya thank you so that's all we have on the gist uh, tonight uh, continue following us on our website on youtube Uh, follow us on Instagram. Let us have your comments and observations and your criticism, of course. And do support us. And looking forward to be with you again. Uh, good night. <laughs>